you know what I've always wanted to do? I wanna take a full thickness of wool roving and weave a diamond twill pattern. I don't know how this is gonna work, so let's try it. Now, here's the thing. I would have to use a very big loom to be able to weave this entire pattern with such a chunky material. So we're going to shrink this down so that it's just one diamond. The whole piece will just be one diamond. So in order to do that, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take our diamond twill pattern. I will put a link in the description box below for how you can sign up for our email list in order to get this free pattern. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold the pattern so that just this darker column is showing like so. Then I'm gonna see where a full diamond is. So the full diamond is from here to here. So I'm gonna fold this over so that we still see that full diamond plus we added in this end row. Then from there, I'm just gonna use a pencil and I'm gonna mark off a line right here because we're only gonna weave from here to here so that we just have one full diamond. So I'm gonna make that line and then I'm just gonna sort of give myself that reference that we're not weaving this. Okay, so we have our pattern and I'm gonna just grab some tape and, and tape this up so that it stays put. Now the next thing I need to think about is the structure of this piece because we can't just weave this the same way we would if we were using a material that's like the Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick. It's a chunky yarn, but it's nowhere near as chunky as this wool roving. Wool. Wool -ger. Wool, -ger. wool roving. So wool roving is super thick. A thick king. That being said, it can be various thicknesses. Sometimes it's not as thick as other times. This is just, I'm not sure why that is, but it is what it is. But I'm gonna use this beautiful green color. It's called asparagus and you can find it in my shop. I'll put a link. So there's a couple of things that could go wrong here. We need to figure out what the structure of this piece is gonna be because if I were to take my loom and figure out how many wefts per inch I actually need and I wanna make that equal with my warp ends per inch. What that leaves me with is it's like, let's measure this. How much space is one row of this roving gonna take up? Now I'm gonna squish it a bit because that's just how it works when we're weaving it, it's gonna squish down. So I'm gonna need approximately an inch, maybe more for every row. Now if I were to warp this loom to have one end per inch, it would look a little funny, but it would basically look something like this. So our warp strings would be super spread apart. Now, the problem with that is, how is that gonna work with like the structure? Is that going to stay together? Is it just gonna come off the loom and sort of just flop around? Because that's a pretty wide warp set. So what I'm thinking is that we actually warp the loom with a single warp on it. So that means there's one string in every notch. And instead of weaving only over one, under three, like instead of treating each block of this pattern as one block equals one warp string, I think we're gonna have to extend that. I know this is a lot of math, but stick with me. One full diamond is nine rows and it's gonna take up an inch approximately per row. So what I need to do is figure out how to do that in the warp as well. So I'm working on a four ends per inch loom. So there's four warp strings for every inch, which means I'm gonna try to treat every block as four warp strings instead of one. Does that make sense? I'll, I'll make this make more sense once we get going, but I think that's the best course of action. For my warp strings, how many I need for this one diamond is 11. So that's counting this way. So if I need 11 blocks and each block is going to be four warp strings, I'm gonna need 44 warp strings. Clear as mud, let's warp our looms. The other thing that I wanna figure out because I'm not totally confident how this weaving is gonna end up on the loom. What if I'm wrong? What if it takes more than an inch or less than an inch for each row of the roving? I'm gonna essentially weave this upside down because this is a symmetrical piece anyway. So upside down and right side up is the same. But what I wanna do is make sure that I have the right amount of strings to hang on my dowel. And I'm also hoping this dowel is the correct size at the end. 
So to do this, I'm making my warp string into a loop. And the way that I like to hang my dowel from the loop is I flip it forward. I grab these two loops, bring them together, and then slip it over the dowel and tighten it up. So to measure how much we need for to, in order to do that, I'm gonna go a little bit longer than it needs to be so that we have a little bit of space between the weaving and the top of the dowel. And I'm going to slip that back off, undo that loop, and then simply just measure what that length is. So it's about three and a half inches. So I wanna make sure that I'm starting my weaving three and a half inches up from the top or bottom, depending on how you're looking at this. I'm gonna use 8-8 cotton warp string. This is a nice thick warp string. It doesn't need to be super strong for this, but I kind of like that it's a bit thicker so that we're going to see the warp string a little bit in this piece. Now I wanna be careful not to warp this too tight because again, I've never really done a project like this with the full width of roving and I'm a little bit worried that it's gonna get really tight just because of the sheer thickness of the roving. So I want to sort of partially compensate for that by not warping my loom too tight. Okay, since I wanna hang this from the loops, I want these to be at the bottom of my piece where I tied the warp on. So I'm actually going to be flipping my loom this way because I'm weaving from top of the piece to bottom of the piece, which is symmetrical. So top and bottom are the same. But most importantly, we want those loops to be the right, on the right end. The next thing I'm gonna do is tape down my loom so it doesn't move around. This piece of cardstock that I'm gonna weave in is, it's a little over three inches. It's between, it's a three and an eighth. Let's say three and an eighth. The next thing I'm gonna do is add a twining stitch. This needs to be at the top because if we're weaving over four strings at a time, that's gonna make the top all funky and, and not secure. So I think what I'll do is a twining stitch and then maybe two rows of plain weave. And what I'm hoping is that we can sort of hide that a little bit with the thickness of the roving. I might just do one row of twining and see if that'll work, but it makes me a little bit nervous. But let's just, let's just try one row of twining maybe. I just want it to look good at the top, you know? One of you asked me how to thread our tapestry needles and it made me realize that I don't think we've ever shown that in a normal speed. So I'm gonna show you how I do that now. So I'm using a chunky material and you can see the eye of this needle. It's pretty big, but I'm constantly putting some pretty thick materials through it. So for a yarn like this, I basically like to fold it over, make a loop, grab that between my two fingers, and then I just push it through and grab it on the other side and pull it all the way through. So that's how you can thread our tapestry needles. So next I'll do that twining stitch. And if you need a full tutorial on how to do a twining stitch like this, I'll put the video right here. Okay, I've got my twining in. I'm gonna make sure it looks pretty nice and straight. And I'm just gonna let these tails sort of hang out until we're ready to tuck them in. Before we even talk about the pattern, let's get the length of roving that we need, which is gonna be a lot of roving because like I said, it's nine rows. Let's see how much roving this takes. And I'm gonna go a little bit longer than I need because we need to account for some slack and for it going around the edges of the piece as well. So this is about 11 and a half feet of roving. And like I said, it is extra. There's going to be extra at the end, but I always err on the side of taking a little bit too much because if you try to make that length exact, it's almost always gonna to be too short. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is weigh this for you. Keeping in mind that roving is usually um, measured in weight more than it is length, but the thickness can vary. So in some cases, if it's thicker roving than this, it might be a little bit less length. If it's thinner, it might be more length. But this is 3.3 ounces. So we'll call it a three and a half ounce or about 93 grams. Another problem that I feel like I could really run into with this project is that if I just, let's say, thread this through my tapestry needle, which is possible, because usually roving is kind of tapered at the end, but if I were to feed this through and weave it like this, and I'm going over four, and I'm dragging it through my warp, I'm worried that by the time I get to the end of this piece, this roving is gonna be a little bit felted because of all the 
agitation it's receiving by going through the warp strings. So something I'm not sure we've ever talked about on this channel, we're gonna use a shed stick, also known as a pickup stick. Now my pickup stick is nothing fancy. It is a paint stick. You could also use a plastic ruler, um, even a wood ruler. I don't know if I would recommend using a metal one. If it's sharp on the edge, you just don't wanna cut your warp strings. So let's grab this pattern. And again, we're going to treat each block as four warp strings. If you need the basics of weaving diamond twill, check out this video first because it's going to make this a lot easier. So in this case, I need to go over three blocks, which is actually 12 warp strings. So I'm going over 12, under eight, over four, under eight, and then over 12. Now the way that a shed stick works is that once you have woven it in, you flip it up like this and it creates what's called a shed. And all the shed is, is like if you think of a lean to shed, it, it creates a space in your warp for things to go through. So I'm gonna not use my tapestry needle and I'm gonna just feed this through. I'm gonna leave a tail to make sure we have some space there. And that's our first row. Now I can take my shed stick out and I can move to the next row. So in this row, we're going under four, over four, under eight, over 12, under eight, over four, under four. Now I'm gonna have to pay really close attention to how this is going around the edge. So see how it's sort of flowing around the edge nicely and it's not creating a weird twist here. So then I can beat that down. I'm also trying to look at these strings to make sure I'm not pulling them in and we don't wanna beat down very hard so that these are just stacking on top of each other. So now I'm moving up to the, to the next row and just like before, it's the same idea. We're treating every block as four warp strings. So that'll be tucked into there. I do like how ginormous this diamond is. I think we're gonna just keep going and we're gonna, again, use this as an experiment. You can learn from my mistakes and we'll see what happens. And you can see it's getting a little twisted as I'm weaving. So before I beat it down, I'm untwisting it. I need to untwist it the correct way though. And I'm trying to be really delicate as I hold and work with the wool because this really fine merino, it likes to felt very easily when agitated. So I'm just trying to be really gentle with it. Okay, so I've woven the entire diamond. Um, how do we feel about it? I think it looks kind of cute. And I'm just trying to decide if I wanna spread it out a little bit more. I'm happy with that. How much extra did I have? Let's find out. So I'm gonna just pull this apart here to leave a tail to tuck in. So I had, so I had about three feet more than I needed. So bear that in mind if you do this. Though to me, it'd be really scary if I ended it and there was only this much left. <laughs> so I think what I need to do now is add another twining stitch and then we need to figure out what the fringe on this piece is gonna be. Now that I'm working on this end of the piece, I'm gonna flip my loom. I'm gonna do the twining stitch and then push it up. But basically what I'm trying to avoid here is um, agitating the wool. So now that I have that twining in there, I'm just gonna simply push it with my weaving comb. How long did this end up? It did end up nine inches. That's what we wanted. That's what I was expecting. Okay, that's good. And then this is gonna get tucked in back there. That'll get tucked in back there. Now let's talk about a fringe situation. So I'm gonna have this dowel at this end. This will be the top of the piece and I need to do some sort of fringe. So my questions here are, <laughs> if I take this off the loom, and it flops around and the structure is just not there, am I gonna regret using a lot of stuff for the fringe? So that's what we need to decide. Also, what should the fringe be? Do we want it plain? Do we want it colorful, contrasting, matching? I think we're going for the, the plain fringe again. Maybe we can make it a little bit more interesting by adding two different sizes. I'm going to take a strand of five millimeter cotton string and a strand of two millimeter cotton string. And then we're gonna do those together and it's gonna make it a little bit more full, but also it's gonna add some interest because there's sort of this thick and thin thing going on. I'm going for the short fringe. We're gonna see if it works with this piece. 
Now, I want my fringe to end up about three inches, so I think I'm gonna cut it at about seven inches to account for the Raya knot and also give me some play for cutting. So maybe I should go seven and a half. Now, before we worry about how straight this all is, we're going to put in a few rows of plain weave followed by one row of twining to finish this off. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I'm using Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick for all the twining. So then I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna have to check this again after I tuck in all the ends, but I'm gonna take a ruler and it's looking about five and a half from the bottom. So I just wanna go across and make sure everything is about five and a half inches from the bottom. I think I'm ready now to flip this over and tuck in all the ends. All right, for these twining ends, I'm gonna get a little bit creative because I don't really have anywhere to tuck them in. So I'm gonna take one over here and one over here, and I'm literally just going to tie them in a secure square knot. Make sure it's really nice and tight. And then I'm gonna cut off the ends and again, leave little tails so that I can't, can't come undone. Now I'm gonna slip out the cardstock. I'm gonna take this off the loom and we're gonna have sort of a moment of truth. Maybe we won't be able to fully see it until it's on the dowel whether or not this worked, but I'm just gonna slip this off. Okay, it's off the loom. I don't think we're gonna fully know till I actually can hang it, but I think because of, I don't know, I'm nervous. So <laughs> I'm going to put this on the dowel now. We just have this one twining stitch and I'm worried about it getting loose and wonky on me. So, we're just gonna go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna hang this from two loops at a time and we'll see how it goes. Okay, the moment of truth. Okay, I actually think it's totally fine. And I think this is a really cute piece. It's very chunky, but this totally worked. I think it's such a cute piece. And if you're looking for something that weaves up quickly, this is definitely it. Click right here for more pattern weaving projects.